Hey, this is Jordan Belfort, the real Wolf of Wall Street, and you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Prepare yourself for the most intensely bananas motion picture of our time. Psycho Ape. Primate movies have come and gone. This is also a movie. Psycho Ape. A bloodthirsty banana butcher with revenge in his veins. Stabbing his way into your heart. Can anyone escape the slaughter of Psycho Ape? Welcome back to the greatest show in the universe. Uh, today we have director, superstar Greg DeLiso. How are you doing, man? Hey, man, Anthony. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. I'm Greg. Nice to, nice to see you. So, uh, Greg's third time on the show. Like uh, Throughout all the shows we've done, I think this is uh, last. We had him on for Hectic Knife uh, when he released Hectic Knife. Uh, now uh, we've had him on for Psychwave when it was being filmed, and now it's released. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to promote Psychwave right now for the next however many minutes. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, I'm always happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> thanks man uh no it's funny knowing you and then having you on the show too it's actually it just makes me laugh because i actually i actually talked to you quite a bit and, and then to have you as a guest is just funny to me i don't know why for sure, like, no for sure man of course yeah i was just there i was just in st louis hanging out it was fun yeah. Yeah, I haven't hung out with a lot of my guests. That's what's weird. You know, I don't know a lot of them, so it's like, <laughs> it's it's almost like a different level of interview. It's like it's like well, I already know the answers to most of these things, but I have to like figure out a way to ask questions that the viewer would want to know almost now. Right, right. So, um, what got you into like directing by like, originally? Like, uh, what was that moment that that just like you knew you're gonna be a director? I guess. Uh oh man. Well, I mean, I saw Jurassic Park when I was six and uh, was a Spielberg kid. And was obsessed with, uh, I was all nerdy about like Spielberg and George Lucas and those guys when I was like seven years old. Um, back then I thought I was going to be a paleontologist because of the dinosaurs. And then I also was under this horrible delusion that I was going to be a hockey player for a while. And that didn't pan out at all um, because I'm like five, six and love fast food and never played video games and I'm not coordinated at all or anything. Um, but, uh, no, I was always serious about filmmaking and I always, uh, um, wanted to do that, uh, basically since I was, since I was six and saw the behind the scenes of Jurassic Park and I saw Spielberg like directing on set and I, you know, at that age, you don't really know what, what they're really doing, but you just kind of want to do that. I mean, he's playing with giant robot dinosaurs as an adult. And uh, it just seemed like uh, whatever adults do can do that. That's what I want to do. So I started taking it really seriously when I was in junior high. I was like the kind of um, uh, idiot nerd kid that um, really had no interest in like what all the other kids were doing at all. And I was always carrying around like uh, Stanley Kubrick and David Lynch and uh, Scorsese like books and stuff and reading those in, in class um and the teachers kind of just like left me alone for the most part to do that and then I started making movies when I was like 14 um and I made a feature uh that's not very good but uh is quite was quite an achievement it was like two and a half hours long that was when I was 16 and I never looked back I've just uh it's been almost 20 years now I'm in my mid-30s and I've just been making movies ever since that's awesome. Yeah, no, you elaborated a little bit on the watch this movie as you started telling me about Jurassic Park. I'm like, I saw that and watched this movie. When you when you answered what you want to be when you're a child, I'm like, oh, I, yeah. I, I'm like, I'm like, I saw that. And then no, you elaborated on that's interesting. That's an interesting story, man. Uh, yeah. So you you're born and raised like Detroit, I guess. Then and uh, you're now in Los Angeles. Yeah, I uh, yep uh, was raised in the um, the northern suburbs of Detroit, which you know it's like any real Detroit person would be like, oh, that's not Detroit. It's like it's not it's not you know eight mile scary Detroit Detroit. Um, at all. Uh, it's just like the, you know, the, the happy suburbs kind of, um, you know, a few towns over from where like Sam Raimi is from. He's like a really famous director that did like the first two Spider-Man movies or first three, I guess, and uh, Evil, famously Evil Dead and all those movies. Um, but uh, yeah, it's actually, it's actually the next, I'm from the next suburb over from Madonna, uh, who is probably like whatever, like 40 years older than me or something like that. But, um, yeah, so it's like the, it's like 20, you know, people think of eight mile, I, I'm from 22 mile road. Um, so you kind of get the idea that it's like North or whatever, uh, from crazy Detroit stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, I lived in New York city for seven years when I was a kid, I moved there by myself when I was 17 and went to film school. 
uh, stayed out there for, um, you know, those seven years and just started freelancing in the film industry, directing a lot of uh, tiny budget music videos and made, made mostly made hectic life out there and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, uh, now I'm living in LA, kind of like finally, uh, you know, after 20 years of making movies, I figured I should finally be in the city where movies are made. And of course, it lines up perfectly with um, a uh, pandemic and the whole state being on fire and the industry uh, totally dissolving into something else. So I picked a great time to live in LA. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, I think you're the first person in LA that's self aware. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I mean, you know, I have to say the people out here are. Uh, ridiculously handsome the boys and girls uh especially the girls but uh everyone they're all they all look like instagram influencers they're all holding their phones like this all the time and they even if they're 40 they look like they're like a 22 year old like gorgeous model like i've never seen in my life they're quite the uh sirens out here it's kind of uh insane it's kind of it's yeah it's kind of insane and it sucks with covid because you know nothing is open. And even if it is open, it's like, no one's going there. You don't really want to go anywhere because it's all scary and stuff. Yeah. It's a, uh, so, sounds like you're having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love LA though. I mean, I, I do miss snow. I miss uh, cold weather. It's December. We're talking right now. It's the middle of December and it's like warm t-shirt weather outside, which is like unbelievable because back home and in New York, it's like snowing already. And I do miss snow. I'm a huge hockey person. So I uh, love the whole uh, winter hockey culture and stuff. Um, and when the, you know, when all the rinks and all the good stuff open up back here, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to uh, going and checking those out. But no, it's very surreal for it to be so it's like 75, 80 degrees every single day. It's very hot. It's very hard to get used to. That's but I can't complain. <laughs> no, yeah. it sounds sounds interesting. Uh, no, Greg, uh, Greg was in St. Louis for a little bit of uh, uh, a couple weeks ago. I think uh, he got me to wear a mask actually for. Uh, <laughs> well, I complained about it the whole fucking time, but uh, uh, just uh, to sightsee though. No, I, uh, you saw the St. Louis Zoo and the uh, the art museum and some shit. Yeah, uh, the zoo was uh, underwhelming because I feel like all the animals had COVID or something because you couldn't. That's like they we could we had trouble finding the animals, which I have to assume that during. Uh, non-pandemic times um the zoo was was more lively uh the art museum was awesome you know i have to say i had nothing to do with uh making you wear a mask i feel like your local government uh was uh enforcing <laughs> mask rules and I, I seem to remember the word cucked uh being thrown around quite a bit uh during that that mask experience um i myself have no problem with the masks um you know i i'm in love with my uh former Governor of uh, Michigan, Governor Whitmer. I'd love to uh, marry that woman. I think she's uh, gorgeous, and I'm on her uh, political side. And I was happy to to vote for the the mask team. But uh, yeah, you know, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? Everyone has their stuff, and um, yeah, you know, I, I like masks though. I'm, I'm, I, I wish everyone would wear their mask with with joy, like I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, you're like a cartoon character. Like yeah, in a good in a good way. In a yeah. Good way. No, so uh, how are the Monet paintings? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Monet paintings are great. Uh, as Morty Seinfeld said, he must have been uh, farsighted or whatever. I guess is that or nearsighted? I don't know. I don't. I can't remember the joke. They were good. They're good. You know, they're he's got the blurry flowers or lily pads and shit. It's good. But I hate to I hate to let you know <laughs> about the, I hate to uh, about the zoo, but it's ne it's never <laughs> hey. good. We yeah, gotta start. We gotta start over now. Uh, I'm just. I'm just yeah, <laughs> let's start from the top. Um, welcome back to the. I'm joking. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, do, I do it every time you're on the show. I think there's some reason it makes me laugh. I don't know why, but uh, but no. Uh, the zoo's never good. So uh, it basically. Okay. Uh, but but it's worth seeing if you've never been to St. Louis. But I'm just saying like it's it's. Uh, I used to, I used to go there quite a bit actually when I first moved there, but like um the animals are always not out. <laughs> like, it right, makes no sense. Weird. Yeah. I mean, oh, in the penguin house. The the penguins were out for sure because they had no choice. And then uh. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know if they have any like lions and tigers and stuff um it didn't seem very big and all you know all the food and all the concessions were closed and everything but um yeah it yeah like, i mean it's fun to walk around and make fun of stuff yeah it looked like 1939 germany yeah exactly right <laughs> like, not right. quite not quite like you know but yeah. it's almost there mm -hmm. it's a good yeah. time anyway back to the interview uh yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So what? Uh, what are you working on now? Like, where do you see yourself like in the future as far as film goes? Like, uh... 
Um, yeah, so I'm working on this music documentary that I started uh, uh, almost 15 years ago. Um, interviewed a bunch of musicians, did over like 7,500 some to 100 interviews somewhere around there, collected like a few hundred hours of footage. Um, very large in scope topic. It's really about um, uh, music in general. Why do human beings make it? Why do we listen to it? Why is it universal? Why does it make our bodies move? Why are some people addicted to it? Why does it, you know, affect the brain in the same way that drugs do? All that kind of good stuff. Um, was fortunate enough to interview uh, some legendary people like Daniel Johnston, Bela Fleck, uh, Victor Wooten, DJ Spooky, Sugar Hill Gang, um, some people like that, you know, dozens, dozens more. Um, basically did all those interviews when I was 19 and 20 and uh, only have a rough cut now because I kind of went off and made other films. So I did, like we said, Hectic Knife. Uh, we just finished Psycho Ape. Um, so I'm actually fortunate enough to be uh, working with a producer on that project now to be finishing it. And I'm kind of working on that uh, pretty much every day, trying to get that ready. And then I just have a few screenplays I'm working on. Um, so I got this movie called Bad Brain uh, that I've been writing that I want to uh, kind of start shooting fairly soon here, actually. Um, that's kind of like a crazy comedy. Uh, I would call it like an anarchy film. I don't even know if that's like a real genre, but it's basically just... Um, you know, absolute madness. I mean, there, there is going to be some kind of a story, but, uh, you know, just like craziness and fun and, uh, dark stuff and comedy and everything. Um, probably start shooting that with Kansas, uh, you know, relatively soon here and then got two other, um, screenplays that I'm also working on. Um, you know, w w between Hectic Knife and, and Psycho, if those are both, um, you know, DIY micro budget uh, film. So I think the budget for Hectic was about 25,000 um, between two people and the budget for Psycho Ape was about 10 or 12,000 and that was all raised on uh, Kickstarter. Um, and uh, I love making films uh, for like, you know, basically no budget. I mean, that's like a such a tiny amount of money. I mean, I know it's like a big amount of money in the real world, but it's like a, for a film, it's like basically zero. Um, I love doing that. It's, you know, they call it guerrilla filmmaking. I, I, uh, that's kind of what I've always done since I was in high school. Um, Bad Brain will be similar to that, like in that way for the most part. Um, and I'm excited to do that. Uh, but these screenplays that I have um, are a little bit bigger and badder and kind of, um, you know, just are going to need uh, some kind of budget. Um, and so I'm kind of looking forward to um, kind of graduating up to the next level of the career there um you know somewhat partially why i'm in la um you know, even though the industry is kind of dissolving in some ways and and really going through a lot of changes um it's still true that um you know the the real hub of the uh north american you know film industry is is here and it's probably it's definitely the largest filmmaking city uh in the world i'm not exactly sure where bollywood is um mumbai like, mumbai <laughs> yeah is it yeah uh is headquartered and of course paris uh berlin are uh two you know huge filmmaking cities new york is pretty big too but I, obviously la is always going to be the biggest one and um yeah so i'm kind of happy to be here and be working on stuff being writing and writing and everything it's awesome man like i that was a lot of good information i even know you and that was like some new information for me like that's like uh that was, yeah. that was, that's good man i love to hear the fucking i love to hear you still going dude and like up in your game and like making more movies and shit like uh Greg also did a documentary on Canada. Uh, what was that called again? Like you did a Canada's Canada's best kept secret. So I did that when I was like 23. Um, it's a uh, posthumous uh, documentary about a um, Canadian author naturalist named uh, R. D. Lawrence, Ron Lawrence. Uh, he wrote 30 books, including the Natural History of Canada and um, a few, probably at least a dozen books about wolves. That wolves were kind of his specialty. Um, he was, uh, also like, uh, I guess you'd call someone of like an environmental activist, uh, and a naturalist. And he, uh, rescued about 2000 animals on his, uh, uh, acreage up in, um, Halliburton, Ontario, which is like kind of tiny, tiny, tiny town, like way off the map, kind of Northern Ontario. Um, so growing up, my grandparents were, uh, friends with him and his, his now widow, um, and so I, after, when I was like right in film school, when I was like 17 or 18, I connected with her um, and I interviewed uh, her and his, a lot of his friends and stuff and uh, kind of pasted together this documentary using 
uh, those interviews and then a bunch of like footage um, just throughout his sort of life. Um, he died in 2003 and he was probably, I should know this, but I think he was like around 80 at the time. Um, and he just lived a really long, really interesting life. He uh, fought in the Spanish Civil War in the early part of the 20th century and then immigrated to Canada in the 50s and uh, lived out in the bush for like a couple of years on his own. And uh, yeah, just wrote all these books and was a really kind of prolific, interesting guy. So yeah, I did that documentary. Um, never really found distribution with it. It was on Amazon for a while. I still have, you know, copies of it. I sort of ended up self-distributing it, uh, my own. Um, I still sell a couple copies everywhere every now and then because, you know, he, he had like a small and niche, but uh, pretty worldwide um, following because his, his books were published in like, I don't know, like dozens of countries with so tons of languages and stuff. Um, and I think it's in a couple stores in Canada and everything, but, uh, yeah, it was a fun one. I mean, it was, I was only like, like I said, 20 in my early, early twenties when I did that, but yeah, it's fun. It's like 70 minutes. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, well, um, is there any places you want people to follow you or find you online or, uh, to connect either like, um, and for any reason? Like... Sure. My website is just, uh, my name at com. So Greg Deliso, uh, G R E G D E L I S O.com, uh, pretty much, um, the canon of my work is on that site going back to like my early days of making stuff. Um, not, you know, it's, there's a few things on there that are not available yet, but hopefully will be soon. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've made dozens and dozens of things. And if you include all the like paid work, it's like hundreds of things, but the kind of what's on the website is what I sort of consider my actual work. Um, and then the only social media that I actually use, I don't, I don't use Twitter at all. Um, I still don't even know what like Snapchat and TikTok like even are. I'm kind of too old for that stuff. Um, but uh, I use Facebook. You can just always look me up on there. And then my uh, Instagram, which I do use uh, often, is uh, Matthew the Collie, which that's my dog. Um, Matthew spelled with two T's. <clears throat> um, and yeah, he's a collie. So uh, M A T T H E W uh, the and then C O L L I E. Yeah. <laughs>